This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, up next, it's the return of Dustin Runnels to the Royal Rumble. The last time we saw him was five years prior, last week's episode, the 1991 Royal Rumble. There, he was teaming with his dad, Dusty Rhodes, as Dustin Rhodes. Tonight, he's back, but not as Dustin Rhodes, as Gold Dust. It's been an interesting debut for Gold Dust, too. He began this program with Razor in the last In Your House event, sending him a love letter that got Razor super angry. And the announcers tried to get ready to say you got him super aroused. I was anyway, well, I wasn't there. You were, do you want to explain? No, I thought, I just thought that see, that was another one where I was trying to read your mind and go ahead. Okay. I should just stop reading. The announcers try to get razor to read the letter on raw, but he doesn't want to do it. And they toy around with the idea of going further and further into the weeds of this gay aspect of the character. Uh, But I guess the company seems to back off it significantly here because we get the addition of a female valet. Now we had also seen where he had drawn razor in a heart on his chest. Uh, so he unzipped his suit reveals a heart drawn on his chest and the word razor inside the heart, but you back off it a little bit because we have a very nicely dressed woman smoking a cigar and using a director's chair. I like the presentation when we add Marlena here, what was the thinking in adding her at this point? Well, again. Goldust was not gay nor presented as gay. He was androgynous. Um, pretty simple shit. And he would use sexuality uh, to either fuck with people's minds or, or what have you, make you think one thing while he was really thinking something else. The combination of Goldust with Marlena was, first of all, they were married, so they already had chemistry and it was a it was a nice dichotomy it, it, it was it was just complete opposites when you look at it uh opposite but yet the fucking same she's all dressed in gold and beautiful golden tan smoking a cigar and uh here's this guy dressed from head to toe in gold and it was all about gold dust and um marlena dietrich was you know, this great Hollywood legend that, uh, liked the name and hence Marlena was born. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, the match itself. This is a different era, but boy, when you listen to this back on the network, you can hear it and fans are chanting some pretty ugly things at gold dust in hindsight. Do you wish you had some of this gold dust stuff to, to take back and maybe that wouldn't have happened or was the juice worth the squeeze because you told such a great story and he was an interesting character. Well, I think that gold dust was an interesting character. And I think that sometimes that the audience is, is going to do what the audience is going to do. That's fair. Um, what's that? I said, that's fair. Yeah. And so you, you look at it and you weigh that the story was solid and the story was something that was very provocative for the time and the audience went one way with it and you could try and pull them back a little bit, but it wasn't, you know, you didn't, you didn't go down when I think a lot of people, you know, thought we were going, we, we wanted to be provocative and, and have people wondering what the hell have they got up their sleeves? What, what the hell are they doing now? Let's also talk about the fact that on commentary here, Vince McMahon starts to tone it down a little bit. According to the observer quote, McMahon totally toned down the gay inferences on the commentary, but perfect more than made up for it. Although it appeared McMahon wasn't happy that he did, uh, fast forward a bit at this point in the match, Marlena faked that she twisted her ankle, distracting the ref, allowing the one, two, three kid to come out and use a spin kick off the top rope on Ramon and gold dust got the pin two and three quarter stars. There's been a lot written and discussed about razor being unhappy with this Meltzer would even say razor Ramon is complaining long and loud about his program with gold dust. The baby faces in the click hate the gimmick and unfortunately have taken it out on Dustin Rhodes, the person rather than accepting him as someone saddled with a bad gimmick. Who's just trying to do his job. Granted the angle is really lame. Ramon is trying to get the program switched to working with Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Um, do you remember Razor trying to get it switched to Hunter Hearst Helmsley will work backwards. 
I know Razor hated it. Razor definitely didn't didn't want to do it. But let let's unpack some of the things that that uh, the the expert that uh, every booker in the world takes advice from, Dave Meltzer, because he's the only guy that has has a proven track record of actually drawing money and running a promo. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, anyway, um, Dustin Rhodes saddled with a bad gimmick. Boy, that really, you know, Dustin Rhodes was coming off such of a hot run as Dustin Rhodes and and was saddled with a horrible gimmick that spanned, what, 20 years or more? And um, actually gave him a hell of a run and and a a hell of a gimmick, I, I would argue. Um, but this coming from the, the, the expert in the business because he's booked and drawn so much money in, in his in his lifetime um, speaking to what bad and good gimmicks are. Uh, are you done? Yeah. So if Razor didn't want to work with Goldust, is having one, two, three kid come in and, and do the fuck finish like this, is that a compromise? That way you still uh, get gold dust I, over, but razor doesn't technically have to put him over. He's putting over Waltman. No, I, I think, he, and here's the, the crazy thing about it. And again, the way that I remember it, razor didn't want to work with the character gold dust. He didn't like the, it, and I don't remember them. I think it was hard on Dustin just in general, because I think Dustin took it personally. I don't believe that, that razor ever, you know, got to the point, fuck, I don't want to work with Dustin Rhodes. I, I don't think that was ever it. It was that Razor didn't want to work with the Gold Dust character. Plus, Razor knew he was leaving. When Razor got in the ring and worked with Gold Dust, I thought they had great fucking matches. And they were able to deliver every time that you put him in the uh in that role to deliver. Let's so uh... it, it was two professionals that were able to go out there and make music. One of them uh, reluctantly wanting to do it, but when it was time to go do his job, he did. I just think it's interesting because sometimes we poke holes in all the click stuff and we say, oh, that's just the internet or, oh, that's just disgruntled guys and shoot interviews. But we've got one guy going to win the rumble. Another guy's going to start to tween a little bit. He's with the undertaker going to flip off the middle finger. We got another guy coming in at number one, going to put on quite a show. We got another guy who's going to lose to gold dust, but he doesn't really want to. So he has his other buddy, also another member of the click come in and cause the DQ. And he's really trying to get that switched. I don't want to work with this guy. Let me work with the guy coming in at number one. The click is a thing here, whether we want to say they're not powerful. The click is a thing, but, but again, you're taking coincidence. You're taking, again, you're, you're talking about four of the most talented and top guys that were in the company at the time. So not to utilize them in that. So it, it, it's basically, um, okay, well, these guys are all friends and, and other uh, top guys. Let's don't use them because they're friends outside of it. And, and they're, they're clickish outside of it. That's not good business. Let's, uh, let's, let's pivot a little bit. How much do you think, was it all money? Is, is that the primary motivation that makes Scott Hall want to go work for WCW or does this gold dust angle help contribute a little bit with his unhappiness? Do you think? I think Scott Hall's unhappiness was as basic as, uh, the, the money and the schedule. Another thing in the observer, I wanted to bring up quote, despite the similarities of it with other SMW segments. The Goldust Razor Brawl was choreographed by Bruce Pritchard and not Jim Cornette. What can you tell us about that? The the brawl that we did in uh, Bangor, Maine to get to this? I believe. Like it would have been backstage and there was a... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mike Kyoto broke them apart and they threw them into oh. a guardrail, that whole deal. Yeah. That was you? That was me, yeah. I guess my question is, I just... I don't know. I I just never imagined that you were the guy. I thought you were doing vignettes and obviously you're writing storylines and all that. I didn't imagine that you're actually setting up the scenes like that. I just assumed that would have been a quote unquote agent. 
but that wasn't the case here. Well, I mean, I've, I've done pretty much everything and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you're not qualified to do it. I'm just saying in my head, you would have handed somebody the idea and said, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do. And y'all, y'all work with Michael and figure it out. Or y'all work with whoever the other agents were strong, but whatever the fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, but I did both. I mean, I'd, I'd work with other agents. I'd set stuff up, whatever it took. So uh, this happened to be one that uh, we were we were there. Or there were very few of us and, and knocked it out. So it was, it was a TV deal, and it was something that I was specifically wanted in a certain way. So, you know, a lot of times it's you'll have, you'll have someone there that's to set up the match or set up the angle, but usually – uh, one of us would be there that, that's walking through it and letting everybody know, you know, here's what we're going to do. And maybe the agent or whatever will help, help you get there in a more logical way or something like that. But this was more a case of, <laughs> I was the one there to shoot it. So here guys, that's what we're going to do. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.